having a good time while I was lying awake all night thinking of you. <laughs> In the early 1940s, Hollywood was abuzz with the production of This Land is Mine, a powerful drama set during the tumultuous times of World War II. The casting process for this movie was a meticulous journey, carefully orchestrated by the director, Jean Renoir. The lead role of Albert Lurie, a mild-mannered schoolteacher who gains courage amidst adversity, was offered to Charles Lawton. Renoir admired Lawton's ability to portray vulnerability and strength simultaneously. Lawton, known for his versatile performances, accepted the role, bringing depth and nuance to the character. Maureen O'Hara, an Irish-American actress, was cast as Louise Martin, Laurie's love interest. Their chemistry was undeniable, having previously starred together in Jamaica Inn. A screen test confirmed their on-screen compatibility, and O'Hara's fiery spirit proved to be the perfect counterbalance to Lawton's restrained intensity. The role of George Lambert, a ruthless collaborator, went to George Sanders. Known for his suave and sophisticated demeanor, Sanders brought a chilling elegance to the character. His ability to convey malevolence with subtlety made him an ideal choice for the role. For the part of Major von Keller, a German officer with a moral compass, Renoir chose Walter Slezak. Slezak, an Austrian-American actor, had previously worked with Renoir in The Southerner. His ability to portray complex characters with conviction made him a perfect fit for the role. The casting of This Land is Mine was a testament to the power of chemistry, intuition, and experience. Each actor was chosen for their unique abilities, creating a dynamic ensemble that brought the film to life. This Land is Mine, directed by Jean Renoir, showcases the filmmaker's unique vision and style. Renoir's approach to the story was deeply rooted in his political beliefs, and experiences during World War II. The movie is set in a small town under Nazi occupation, and Renoir's aim was to explore the psychological impact of occupation on the townspeople. He drew inspiration from his own experiences, having lived in France during the German occupation. Renoir's directorial style is characterized by his use of long takes and deep focus, which create a sense of realism and intimacy. He also employed a subtle form of acting, asking his actors to underplay their emotions to create a more authentic atmosphere. Collaboration was key to Renoir's approach. He worked closely with his cast and crew, encouraging input and ideas. For instance, he allowed his actors to suggest lines and improvise during filming. This collaborative spirit extended to the film's set design and cinematography, with Renoir working hand-in-hand -hand with his crew to create the film's visual language. Renoir's creative influences were vast and varied, he was inspired by the works of Shakespeare, Balzac, and Tolstoy, as well as by the films of Charlie Chaplin and Ernst Lubitsch. These influences are evident in the film's nuanced characters, complex themes, and witty dialogue. The end result is a film that is not only a powerful exploration of the human condition, but also a testament to Renoir's directorial vision and creative prowess. This Land is Mine remains a classic example of Renoir's ability to create compelling and thought-provoking cinema. You're very smart, aren't you? Listen, I don't want to get into trouble. Those boys are all right, they're just doing their job. And you... Let's talk about the 1943 movie, This Land is Mine. It's a classic film with a compelling storyline and memorable performances. Maybe you have a cherished memory associated with this movie or a favorite role that stands out. We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. The film features a variety of characters, each with their own unique journey. Was there a particular role that you found most intriguing? Maybe it was the courage of the protagonist or the cunning of the antagonist that resonated with you. As you reflect on this movie, consider the impact it had on you. Did it make you laugh, cry, or think deeply about the human experience? The power of cinema lies in its ability to evoke emotions and challenge our perspectives. Throughout the film, there are many funny, shocking, and sad facts that add depth to the storyline. So keep watching and see what surprising moments you can uncover. Remember, your thoughts and memories are valuable, and we encourage you to share them with us in the comments below. Let's start a conversation about this classic film and its enduring legacy. Thank you, young man. In the early 1940s, the production of This Land is Mine took place, featuring a compelling story against the backdrop of war. The set designers faced an intricate task, creating realistic yet gripping sets that would transport viewers to wartime Europe. 
they built massive structures like schools, houses, and military bases on sound stages. These detailed settings included everything from aged walls to authentic props, immersing actors, and audiences alike in the narrative. The movie was primarily filmed inside studio lots due to the complexities of constructing elaborate sets and maintaining control over lighting conditions. However, some exterior scenes were shot outdoors. To achieve visual continuity between indoor and outdoor shots, crew members carefully managed natural light sources so they matched the artificial ones used indoors. One notable challenge involves simulating explosions without putting cast members at risk. Special effects technicians developed innovative methods, employing miniatures, optical illusions, and controlled detonations far away from the main set. By doing so, they created convincing battle sequences while ensuring everyone's safety. Another technological advancement came in the form of improved audio recording equipment. Sound engineers utilized directional microphones, which allowed them to capture dialogue clearly, even amid loud background noise, common during action scenes. This technique significantly enhanced overall audio quality compared to earlier films. Despite these innovations, producing this land is mine wasn't devoid of hurdles. Coordinating large crowds, managing extensive prop inventories, and synchronizing pyrotechnics with live action proved demanding. Yet despite these obstacles, the team persevered, resulting in a cinematic masterpiece that continues to inspire today. In the early 1940s, Hollywood produced several films addressing the ongoing World War II. One such movie was This Land Is Mine, released in 1943 and directed by Jean Renoir. Set in a war-torn European town under German occupation, the story revolves around ordinary citizens standing up against tyranny and oppression. While some critics argue that its portrayal of resistance lacks nuance, others find inspiration in the tale of resilience and hope amidst darkness. The main character, Albert Lurie, played by Charles Lawton, embodies moral ambiguity. A mild-mannered schoolteacher, he transforms throughout the movie as his convictions strengthen. George Sanders, delivering a chilling performance, takes on the role of Major Von Keller, a symbol of ruthless Nazi power. Maida Harrison plays Louise Martin, whose passion propels her toward activism despite significant risks. These actors deliver powerful performances, making their characters relatable and memorable. This Land is Mine delivers compelling messages through dialogue rather than visual spectacle due to production limitations during wartime. Its themes include courage, morality, sacrifice, and love, elements relevant both then and now. Although certain aspects may feel dated today, viewers can still appreciate the timelessness of these ideas. Director Jean Renoir masterfully blends drama and suspense while exploring complex topics like collaboration versus resistance. His choice to focus on civilians allows audiences to see how war affects everyday people, leaving indelible marks upon hearts and minds alike. Despite being made nearly eight decades ago, many scenes remain poignant and thought-provoking. Overall, This Land is Mine offers valuable insights into life during World War II Europe, while emphasizing essential human values. Recommended for fans of historical dramas seeking meaningful narratives, this classic remains worth watching, even after all these years. Thank you for your company, Miss Martin. In the 1943 movie, This Land is Mine, the musical score and soundtrack play a crucial role in enhancing the narrative and emotional tone. The film's composers and musicians skillfully created music that complements the storyline and the characters' emotions. The movie's score, for instance, subtly underscores the tension and drama. During intense scenes, the music swells, amplifying the audience's emotional response. In contrast, during quieter, more introspective moments, the music recedes, allowing the characters' emotions to take center stage. The soundtrack, featuring songs from the era, further enriches the film's atmosphere. These songs, with their poignant lyrics and catchy tunes, resonate with the audience, providing a sense of familiarity and nostalgia. The composers and musicians involved in the creation of the film's score and soundtrack drew inspiration from the movie's setting and storyline. They carefully selected music that would enhance the narrative and emotional tone, resulting in a musical accompaniment that is both memorable and impactful. In interviews, the composers and musicians have shared insights into their creative process. They discuss how they strive to create music that would resonate with the audience, reflecting the characters' emotions and the film's themes. 
their dedication and hard work are evident in the final product, a musical score and soundtrack that have stood the test of time. In This Land Is Mine, the musical score and soundtrack serve as a powerful narrative tool, enhancing the audience's emotional connection to the characters and the story. The composers and musicians' skillful use of music adds depth and richness to the film, making it a classic that continues to be cherished by audiences today. Nothing can happen for a week. If they find the man who threw the bomb, they'll all be released. In 1946, Maureen O'Hara became an American citizen, a significant event as she was the first Irish citizen recognized as such by the United States government. This milestone led to a change in the process for all Irish immigrants. O'Hara also starred in This Land Is Mine, which became her final film with Barbara Moffat, who also retired after this movie. Charles Lawton, another actor in This Land Is Mine, received an Academy Award nomination for his portrayal of a real-life king. He was one of 13 actors to receive this honor, including Robert Morley, Basil Rathbone, Lawrence Olivier, Jose Ferrer, Yul Brenner, John Gilgut, Peter O'Toole, Robert Shaw, Richard Burton, Kenneth Branagh, Nigel Hawthorne, and Colin Firth. This Land Is Mine marked the end of Barbara Moffat's film career, but her co-stars, including Maureen O'Hara and Charles Lawton, continued to make significant contributions to the world of cinema. Voltaire. In the movie This Land Is Mine, one of the most iconic scenes is when protagonist Albert Lorry, played by Charles Lawton, gives a powerful speech to a room full of Nazi soldiers. As Lori, a school teacher, stands up to the oppressive regime, the audience is filled with a sense of hope and courage. The direction of this scene is masterful, with the camera focused tightly on Lawton's face, capturing every emotion as he delivers the impassioned speech. The use of lighting and shadows adds to the tension and drama, with the Nazi soldiers lurking in the background, casting long, menacing shadows. Lawton's performance is exceptional, conveying a range of emotions from fear to determination. His voice trembles as he begins the speech, but gradually grows stronger and more confident as he speaks out against the injustices of the regime. The cinematography is also noteworthy, with the camera angles and movement adding to the sense of drama and urgency. The close-ups of Lawton's face, combined with the sweeping shots of the room, create a sense of intimacy and grandeur all at once. This scene has had a significant impact on audiences, inspiring many to stand up for their own beliefs and values. According to Lawton himself, I wanted to show that one man, with courage and conviction, can make a difference. The filmmakers also use this scene to make a statement about the power of words and the importance of free speech. As director Jean Renoir explained, we wanted to show that even in the darkest of times, there is always hope, and that words have the power to change the world. Overall, this iconic scene from This Land Is Mine is a powerful example of the impact that great direction, performance, and cinematography can have on an audience. It is a scene that continues to resonate with viewers, inspiring them to stand up for their own beliefs and values in the face of adversity. Pages 21 and 22. Now tear them out carefully. Transitioning into the details of the movie, the singing of Die Lorelei by German soldiers in the film was a subtle critique of the anti-Semitic Nazi regime, as the lyrics were penned by band Jewish poet Heinrich Heine. Despite his works being burned during the book Burning Episode in Berlin in 1933, they were still published anonymously due to their popularity. Walter Slezak, a key figure in the movie, was the son of renowned operatic tenor Leo Slezak. Leo's humorous remark during a production of Lohengrin inspired the title of Walter's autobiography. Originally titled The Children, the movie delves into themes that resonate with historical significance. Man, you ought to know that he would never do anything violent. And Mr. Lorraine... He's a Jew. This Land is Mine, a 1943 movie, left a significant impact on the cultural and social landscape of its time. The film, set in a French village under German occupation, resonated with audiences as it tackled themes of resistance, courage, and sacrifice. The movie was released during World War II a time when such themes were deeply relevant. It inspired viewers by portraying ordinary people standing up against oppression, thereby contributing to the discourse on resistance and resilience. This Land is Mine also influenced pop culture in subtle ways. The film's portrayal of courage and moral dilemmas under occupation became a template for many future films and stories set in similar contexts. It helped shape the narrative around war 
an occupation in popular culture. Moreover, the movie contributed to discussions on relevant social or cultural themes. It explored the complexities of collaboration and resistance, challenging the simplistic notions of heroism and villainy. This nuanced portrayal encouraged viewers to reflect on the moral gray areas that often characterize times of conflict. In essence, This Land is Mine, through its powerful narrative and relevant themes, resonated with audiences, influenced pop culture, and stimulated discussions on significant social and cultural issues. In With Love from Karen, Walter Slezak is mentioned, an actor who starred in the 1943 film This Land is Mine alongside Maureen O'Hara. Originally, O'Hara was set to play Isabel Bradley in The Razor's Edge in 1946, but Daryl F. Sinat had other plans. He replaced her with Jean Tierney, only to cast O'Hara in the classic Miracle on 34th Street the following year. This Land is Mine marks the third and final film that O'Hara and Charles Lawton appeared in together, the other two being Jamaica Inn and The Hunchback of Notre Dame, both released in 1939. Change your clothes. You can't go out on the street looking the way you do. Now look here, man. I've just come through the street in the house. This Land is Mine, a 1943 movie directed by Jean Renoir and written by Dudley Nichols, received mixed reviews from critics. Some praise the film's patriotic themes and strong performances, while others criticize its melodramatic plot and heavy-handed message. The New York Times' Bosley Crowther gave the film a positive review, calling it a moving and powerful drama with a taut, absorbing story. He singled out Charles Lawton's performance as a schoolteacher who finds his voice in the face of occupation, writing that he gives a performance of such quiet intensity and deep feeling that it lifts the picture out of the ordinary. However, other critics were less enthusiastic. Variety's review called the film a disappointing effort with a contrived and unconvincing plot. The review noted that the film's weakness lies in its lack of subtlety and its tendency to overstate its case. Despite the mixed reviews, This Land is Mine was nominated for two Academy Awards Best Original Screenplay for Dudley Nichols and Best Original Score for Victor Young. While the film did not win in either category, the nominations themselves were a testament to the talent and hard work of those involved in the production. The nominations and positive reviews for This Land is Mine were important accolades for those involved in the film. For director Jean Renoir, the nomination for Best Original Screenplay was a recognition of his talent as a storyteller and his ability to create compelling and thought-provoking films. For Charles Lawton, the positive reviews for his performance were a validation of his skills as an actor and his ability to bring depth and nuance to his roles. Overall, This Land is Mine may not be a perfect film, but it is a classic example of the power of cinema to inspire and provoke thought. The accolades it received are a testament to the talent and hard work of those involved in its production and a reminder of the enduring appeal of a well-told story. If you do get an idea, will you report it? I think so. Following the casting call lists, Henry Rockamore was slated to play a butcher in the movie, but did not appear on screen. The jury foreman, portrayed by George M. Carlton, is referred to as the town butcher by Albert. At the movie's conclusion, Albert reads the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen, a pivotal document from the French Revolution, to his students. On 7 May 1943, the film premiered at 72 theaters in 50 cities, achieving a record-breaking opening day in box office receipts. Opening day festivities were even broadcast on a radio station in Cincinnati, Ohio. In the making of This Land is Mine, director Jean Renoir had a unique way of working. He would often shoot scenes in long takes, allowing actors to freely move around the set. This gave the film a sense of realism, but also led to some unexpected moments. For instance, during a heated argument scene between Charles Lawton and George Sanders, Lawton accidentally struck Sanders for real. However, Renoir decided to keep it in the final cut, believing it added authenticity to their performance. The film's star, Lawton, was known for his meticulous preparation. To get into character as a mild-mannered schoolteacher who becomes a resistance fighter, he spent days observing teachers at local schools. His dedication paid off. Critics praised his nuanced portrayal of a man pushed to extremes. Behind the scenes, the cast and crew faced challenges due to wartime restrictions. Set in occupied Europe, the movie required numerous exterior shots, which were difficult to obtain under blackout conditions. 
Additionally, many materials needed for set construction were rationed, forcing them to be creative with limited resources. Despite these hurdles, the team remained committed to bringing their vision to life. They even incorporated actual war debris into the sets, giving the film an eerie sense of authenticity. The result was a powerful drama that resonated deeply with audiences dealing with the harsh realities of World War II. To walk out of this court a free man, the enemy would take me and put me up against a wall and... In the movie This Land is Mine from 1943, George Sanders' exceptional style is referenced in the Kinks' 1972 song Celluloid Heroes. The film's lead role was always intended for Charles Lawton, as per director Gene Renoir's original vision. Moving on to the cast, Maureen O'Hara was initially considered for a part in The Shootist, John Wayne's final film. However, she was ultimately replaced by Lauren Bacall due to director Don Siegel's reservations. Despite this, O'Hara's career continued to flourish, and she left an indelible mark in the world of cinema. Sanders' portrayal in this land is mine is a testament to his enduring legacy in the realm of classic films. His style and charisma continue to resonate with audiences even today. Meanwhile, Lawton's performance in the film is a true reflection of his versatile acting prowess, which transcended time and genre. In conclusion, This Land is Mine is a classic example of the golden age of cinema, featuring talented actors and a visionary director. The film's impact on the industry is still felt today, as it continues to inspire and captivate audiences worldwide. There's love for me. Even love can be a... Released in 1943, this Land is Mine stands out as a powerful drama during a time when war films dominated the scene. Directed by Jean Renoir, the movie tells a story of resistance against occupation, addressing themes like courage, sacrifice, and deception. Though not as critically acclaimed as some of Renoir's other work, this film left an imprint on cinema through its unique narrative approach. Instead of focusing solely on action and heroism, the movie delves into moral dilemmas faced by ordinary people living under oppression. Such nuanced storytelling became more commonplace in later films, influencing directors to explore complex human emotions amidst tumultuous settings. One notable aspect of This Land is Mine is its examination of collaboration versus resistance during wartime. This theme has been explored in various forms since then, including movies like Casablanca, The Battle of Algiers, and Defiance. These films all owe something to the groundbreaking work done by Renoir in This Land is Mine. Moreover, the film's lead actor, Charles Lawton, delivered a memorable performance that likely influenced many actors who followed. His portrayal of a mild-mannered schoolteacher, transformed by circumstance into a bold resistor serves as a testament to the range of human character. Actors today still draw upon these types of multidimensional roles for inspiration. While this land is mine, may not be the first film one thinks of when discussing influential pieces of cinematic history, its subtle yet profound impact can be seen throughout modern filmmaking. Its exploration of challenging themes, innovative narrative techniques, and strong performances continue to resonate, inspiring both filmmakers and audiences alike. Yes. I'm afraid so, sir. They'll take hostages even if it is an accident. Now we've got to be strong, buddy. Transitioning from the historical context of American 1917 tanks used in security work by the Germans in 1940, Maureen O'Hara's significant role as the first female president of a U.S. certificated airline to the final classroom lesson of Albert Lurie. In the movie, we see a powerful declaration of the rights of man emphasizing freedom, equality, and the role of law in society. Your life, Louis. that's not worth much. Louis. Don't try to lie about it, you're the only one that knew. Get out! In This Land is Mine, Mildred Natwick made her final film appearance. Charles Lawton, who played the character Dr. Moreau in Island of Lost Souls, brought his knowledge of using a whip to the set, having learned it from a London street performer. The film became a popular choice for television broadcasts in the 1950s, airing in various cities such as New York, Memphis, Salt Lake City, Altana, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Wilkes Bar, Washington, D.C., Fort Worth, Detroit, Philadelphia, Dayton, Pittsburgh, New Haven, Chicago, and Cincinnati. Lawton modeled his character's appearance in Island of Lost Souls after his own dentist. Supply train. Now it begins. I'm afraid so, sir. In 1943, the movie This Land is Mine became a reality when Walter Slezak and Charles Lawton had an encounter on a train in Chicago. Slezak handed Lawton a script, which kept Lawton engaged throughout the night. The film marked Terrell Johnson's debut, 
and it was later adapted into a 60-minute radio broadcast on Lux Radio Theater on April 24, 1944. Lawton and Maureen O'Hara reprised their film roles, giving the radio audience a taste of this classic. Well, you're here. But not as your enemy, Lambert. If I thought you were, I wouldn't be doing what I am. I know that. In the movie This Land is Mine from 1943, a striking piece of trivia involves its lead actor, Charles Lawton. Despite his talent and fame, he was known to have a deep fear of performing on camera. This phobia, called scopophobia, caused him great distress during filming, yet his powerful portrayal of a quiet, unassuming schoolteacher who becomes a hero belies his off-screen anxiety. The film tells a story of courage and resistance against occupation, with Lawton's character finding his voice amidst adversity. His performance serves as a poignant reminder that inner strength can triumph over external fears. Hello, this is Laurie. <laughs> Did you know that This Land is Mine was released in 1943? We'd love to hear about your personal connections to this classic. Share with us your favorite moments, what resonated with you, or even how it shaped your view of cinema. Perhaps the powerful performance of the lead actor left an impression on you, or maybe the story's historical backdrop struck a chord. Whatever it may be, we want to hear from you. Let's engage in meaningful conversations around this timeless piece. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic journeys. Your involvement helps create a vibrant community for all of us to enjoy. So, go ahead and tell us your story. We can't wait to read it. Well, the Germans march in. They'll shake hands, make the best of it. If they don't, they'll get the worst of it.